Welcome back to Worth the Every Woodworking. You know, I don't care if you are a woodworker, a maker, a DIYer, carpenter, we're all kind of in the same thing. And a common thing is, every now and then you'll get that one tool that would just kind of totally reinvigorate what you're doing, opens up your imagination, and really wants you to make, make yourself become better in the craft. And today I want to talk about one that I've just kind of rediscovered since probably the end of the last year because things have changed so rapidly and the modern versions have modern versions have opened up some real possibilities for how I work in my workshop not only as a content creator but I'm actually talking about straight up woodworking and as I said earlier I think it's going to be the same for DIYers makers carpenters that kind of stuff and that is the modern day tablet computer and the possibilities it's opening up. Before we start the discussion, I probably need to give you a quick background so that you understand where I'm coming from. I've been kind of on the bleeding edge of technology from about 97 up to about 2010, 2011. My first website I built and uploaded was 9697, I want to believe. I graduated college with a multimedia degree. I went into teaching to teach basically uh, digital uh, media, the Adobe stuff. And I am a hardcore Adobe fanboy. In fact, there was a time I was considering getting my uh, Adobe Ace certification so I could teach Adobe products uh, to the college level. Uh, professionally, it's just you had to get that every single year, and for a high school teacher, it wasn't very necessary. And the kids that were taking my class and going on into multiple media in college were coming back to me telling me we were going way more advanced in high school than what they were doing at the college level. So I, I, I like teaching uh, the technology because the technology was irrelevant. It was just a means of communicating what the students wanted to do. They were just tools. They were stupid tools to begin with. My favorite program was always Adobe Illustrator, all the way back to that first generation they went public with. Uh, because that's really the only art program where you start from a blank screen every single time. Uh, vector art is what Illustrator does, and it's mainly math-based straight line curves. Whereas what most people are familiar with is Photoshop, which is pixel-based. Uh, which pretty much you are always starting with some kind of photograph or some kind of uh, filter or something like that that gets you a starting point. It's not from scratch like Illustrator. And I loved Illustrator from that. Man, because, you know, going back all the way to six or seven years old, I always wanted to be a cartoonist. And I'm not talking about comic books. I'm talking about the Sunday morning cartoons. Uh, Charles Schultz, I believe, was probably one of the most original and greatest American artists out there. He could do more with one curve and communicate more with that simple line than anybody I knew. Think about that baseball mound Charlie Brown always threw off. There were several times where that was all that was in a little comic strip. Also love Bill Waterson. He really changed the game for that kind of industry. But that's a bit off the subject. Anyways, you understand where I'm coming from. And after about 2010, 2011, I, I, I did it more casually as after I left the teaching industry. Well, several years ago, uh, my mother get, passed down uh, her original iPad. And I never really thought that much of these because with my background, these were kind of, I don't want to call them toys, but... They weren't that big a deal. And I used this for uh, probably four or five years after that. It's one of the original ones out there. It's extremely slow, uh, mainly for media consumption and stuff like that. Then a few years ago, uh, Cintiq and a lot of these other uh, products were coming out where the tablets that they were using were becoming really, really cool. And that was the art stuff that people were drawing on computer screens. Then... Apple came out with their Apple Pro and integrated it with a pencil. And this right here was the game changer for me. Now, I could never afford those really high-end ones, but in 2018, they came out with an entry-level one that they were targeting towards the academic crowd. And this is probably one of the only products Apple ever produces 
that they will regularly put on sale. I picked mine up back at the end of 2018 at that uh, Black Friday sale, and I think it was like $249. Just a bare bones stripper. But the integration of this with this was a game changer for me. Now, as much of a technophile as I was, I always preferred a pencil and piece of paper. Whether designing website or starting out illustration, I always started with a pad and pen pencil. And if you look back through all of my videos since I started making YouTube stuff back, I think, 2008 or 2009, if, if, if there was a tool wall in the background, you probably saw a little pad like this. I, I have a whole bunch of them out there. And nowadays, my typical design ideas, I might be at the lathe or I'm cutting a dovetail. I get a little, quick little brainstorm. I will go over to my whiteboard. I will sketch something out, and then I'll be able to think about it all day long. And over lunch or something like that, I will come over. I'll grab this right here, and I will start sketching out my ideas or something like that. And I will do full plans this way. I've never really been a fan of SketchUp or anything like that. I just prefer the design. The thinking aspect, the designing aspect, to happen with a pencil and piece of paper. The problem is, you end up with these books filled up in a corner, and you don't remember when, what page you did the table design or anything like that. So you end up redoing the same things over and over, and that does refine it. But it would be nice to be able to archive stuff. And up until I started playing around with this Apple Pencil, and I'm talking about the Apple Pencil, but it's a stylus, and most of them are fairly comparable if they've been made in the last year or two. Uh, and the ability to save files and name them so that table, green and green style, table, Macintosh, table, turnstile, I can categorize those and go back to them and find them really easy. And that's what I've liked about this. And while I am using an Apple iPad, uh, I'm going to say based upon past experience that more than likely all the competition are going to have some version of not only the software but the techniques you're going to be doing with it. From my understanding those at this entry level basic 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 price point stripped down version at this particular moment uh, at the beginning of 2019 uh, the Apple is kind of in a league of its own, but that will probably change within a few uh, months. If you go up one price point level, uh, there's a lot more competition. But this is the bare bones, as cheap as you can go. Now, I use a program called uh, Linea. There are a bunch of them out there. It's just a simple drawing program. And for what I do, I wanted the most basic thing out there. This is kind of the equivalent of Microsoft Paint. I did not want a bunch of different filters. And as such, this is a fairly inexpensive program uh, to buy. Now, you can get other programs that are a lot more advanced. Uh, there's an example out there called Procreate, which you know a lot of comic people do. But for what I do, Linea was perfect for me because it limited my tools. I really do use this as just a pencil and piece of paper. So here's an example of one something I was doing. And you see my full diagram, my designs. But unlike a piece of paper, I have different layers where I can turn down the opacity. So I might use one layer for all my notes for a drawing. I might use a different layer for each individual part of the illustration that I'm using. So if I want to focus on one area or the other. Here's other things I can do really easily that I can't do on a piece of paper. I can zoom into sections really quickly, grab a pencil, so I could draw, and just like a pencil, a light touch, a heavy touch. I can shade in stuff on the side. I can use my finger as an eraser if I want. I can zoom in and rotate it around to get in stuff really well. I can set it back up. I can zoom out. Now, when I was drawing on a pencil pad of paper with a regular pencil, I'd always have a folded piece of paper that I could use as a straight edge. But check this out. If you're doing, whoops, a, a tap with two fingers will undo any kind of mistake. There we go. So I have this leg right here that I drew out. I wanted to add a slight taper to it. 
Well, watch what happens. If I want to draw a absolutely straight line, all I have to do is draw a line and hold it and it will snap to line. Now look up here. Now look right here. Up at the top, I have this little zip line thing. I can actually adjust the angle of my drawing. So if I want to set one side of it to 10%, then I let go with my pencil. I can then draw another line and then maybe set that to 8%. So I have a slight widening of my pencil leg or of my taper and I can actually integrate that in. Also by doing that one I can establish a baseline so if I know that that right there is going to be set to a flat 90 degrees then oh, I messed up I'll undo it with two finger taps. If that is set to a flat 90 degrees well then I know that this angle right here is 10 degrees minus 90 so there we go I can mark that out as 80 degrees fairly simple to come back to so while I can look at the visuals right here I can add notes and stuff like that for the entire design build I love the fact that I can do that one it integrates that little bit of math it's just something fairly simple but I can also X out of this and come back to any of my other archives now I will say this, I got the smallest one out there, so there's a lot of storage out there. So if I come back and re-edit one of these, change something up, the design or something like that, or maybe add another layer or change, put everything on one layer onto the other so I can have an edit, editing layer. Well, once I'm totally happy with it, I can then save that as a different file name and categorize them on my main computer. The downside is once I've saved it as a JPEG and deleted it off here, I can't go back and edit it as easily. I can import the JPEG and put it down on an underside layer, but that just means I'm drawing on top of that, which is something that you can do to help you out. Say for instance, you're at a museum or you're just browsing through a hotel or something like that, or even going through Pottery Barn or Ikea. You know, their, their furniture might be crap, but they have good designs if you look at it and you analyze it. Just the build quality is a bit off. But maybe you're just, you know, want to copy a tool or something like that to help sketch you out. Well, you can use a phone, the camera on your phone or the camera on your iPad and then import that picture in and actually just trace it out. And I've done that on several occasions. In fact, New t-shirt design. Look familiar? If you can't tell, it's a sketching aspect that has so impressed me with this modern day tablets compared to the one that I was given many years ago. It is so close to an actual pencil in the end product. Not necessarily the feel, though I am told that you can put a film on the outside. It will even give you that a slight resistance feel. But it is so close to the end product that it feels native to me. It feels easy to me. It doesn't feel like technology. It just feels like a tool to get my designs out there. To let me borrow designs from other people through photographs that can then translate into something I want to build. And it's gotten to the point now where I'm spending an hour, hour and a half right before bed instead of playing solitaire or Tetris I'm actually working on designs. This is something I can put in my satchel. In anywhere I go, I'm in the library, I'm at the laundromat, stuff like that, I can pull this out and just let my imagination go wild. And that's not something you can always do with stuff like AutoCAD or SketchUp, though I am told they have versions for those programs right here. This is just very intuitive. The downside is it is pixel based. It is not vector art. I've searched long and wide for a nice high quality vector program. Without that as an option, I would rather have a stripped down, all very, very simple pixel based program like this Linea. Now I'm going to take a few moments right here and walk you through this Linea program uh, as an example of a lot of different styles. And I'll put a timestamp down here where I'll come back and we'll start talking about how I also use this for content creation and other aspects in my shop. So here's some examples of some illustrations I did just this past week 
for the t-shirt design. A basic mallet, but that was actually taken directly off of a photograph of a mallet I have in my shop. I mean, fairly simple design, just one's a tracing of the other to give me a semi-quality illustration, and then you can go back and refine it with shadows and stuff like that. But for vector art for a t-shirt, that worked out really, really well. And that gives you an idea how you can use a photograph as kind of a template. Did the same thing with a Veritas chisel, just uh, somewhat traced it, and then added a little bit of artistic license to it. Then you can see examples. I've been uh, doing some articles and you can actually write on top of pictures to help explain stuff. So to give you an idea of just a basic way you can do it, I'm going to start a new program. You do not have to, I like to use a black background to draw with because I find it easier on my eyes. And I draw in white. It looks like chalk, but no big deal. You have several different uh, drawing utensils. You have a marker or a, a mechanical pencil like illustration. That's just what they call different brushes. And it gives you a more solid line. And in each one of these, if you click it again, you'll get different size variations. A mechanical pencil, just like you use it, it doesn't really matter how you rotate your uh, pen, it's pretty much going to draw exactly the same. Um, then you go back. You have a regular pencil which once again you have variations of thicknesses so you can draw light, heavy, if you lean it on its side you get the full lead effect that kind of stuff and that's what I use most of the time in the finer version just because I like it but if you are doing a lot of vector art for t-shirts and stuff like that that you're going to export out and translate into it using the marker will give you a lot more of a solid line so that it will convert into vector art easily okay you have a thicker marker which you can do thin stuff like that and then that you have variations in not only opacity so that you can go over it and over it and over it that kind of stuff i really don't ever use those my i am so basic in this application all i ever really use is a pencil and the eraser. Now you can, if you have lines or something like that, I know one aspect is to be able to smudge it. And you can smudge your work just like with regular pencils on this. So if you want to blend different things together, like various colors, you can do that one. You can even set it up so you use your finger to smudge. I just have mine, and this is how easy this thing is. The settings, this is all there is to it. That's all the options you have. Finger, when pencil is in use, you can set your finger to do different things, like that blend tool. So now my finger will be the smudging action, just like if you're drawing with charcoal or something like that. I just prefer to be set to um, the eraser. I just, that's what I use it for. Uh, that zip, zip shape delay, that's how long you have to stop if you're drawing a straight line well, let me grab a pencil. If you want to draw a straight line, I stop for 0.75 seconds. Well, and it straightens it out. That's what the zip line does. And boy, do you use that when you're drawing uh, drawing uh, furniture. Okay? That's really all the settings you got and all the tools you got. But one thing I really like is these layers right here. Me coming from the, I don't want to call it pro background, but the really advanced one, a lot of times if I'm drawing something, I like to set myself out of grid. So I might pick this top layer right here and use a very small pencil, and I will draw a straight line, make sure it's at zero or 90 degrees, and now I can turn the opacity down on that layer a little bit, and that gives me a guide for maybe drawing out my tables to making sure if I want to illustrate, you know, some dovetails. Uh, two fingers is an undo. Three fingers taps is a redo. Undo, redo. 
So if you're drawing out do dovetails, you can actually set the angle. So if you want like a 12 degree angle, you can go from there. 78. Do the same thing the other way. You can get your angles just right so that they are consistent on both sides and you have your baseline and I did that a lot in a lot of my other illustrations in that I had one layer that was kind of my guidelines of what I was drawing these different angles at and then I would put notes on that layer and just delete those guidelines at a layer, later date. Now let's look at something like this right here this little table leg. I'm going to select all this right here Clear it. Delete it out. Okay. Tap away. Now watch this. If I want to make a table out of this design, I can actually select it, copy it, move over, paste it, paste it from the clipboard. I have that piece right there. I want to move just this one section right here. So now I'm going to say yes, select it again, and then I have options here, flip horizontally. I can now move it, line it up, and I have a perfectly symmetrical table drawn. So I really only have to focus on one and I can duplicate different aspects of it. And you can do that all over the place to create stuff. And FYI, if you do want to add color for something, which I never do, you do you have this paintbrush, paint roller thing right here, just pick a color. And if you have an enclosed area somewhere, all you have to do is tap on it and it will add the color to that section. No big deal. I just, I never use it because I use this as strictly a sketching pad. Other things you can do is you have some kind of drawing. Like everything else, you can't do this with paper. You can just Click it and twist it around, move it, resize it, however you want to make it fit, do everything, anything you want. And all of this is really fairly intuitive. And I find myself doing this all the time so that I can actually zoom into certain areas. So if I want to draw in a sliding dovetail or something like that, I can zoom in really tight make my drawing that much easier. I can add in my sliding dovetails for a later date. Now once you're happy with the design and you don't think you're going to be going back to it, you know at that point in time I would actually share, share it. Uh, basically save it. Now I am not a big fan of Apple's iCloud service. I, I am a hardcore PC guy on my normal computer and all the Adobe stuff I ever did was on PC. Uh, so I will, I do use a cloud Google Drive and I don't do anything with iCloud but that will allow me to transfer it to my main computer fairly easily without having to plug anything in and use any iTunes or anything like that. But if you want you can just save the image to your pictures and go from there. Now, for you content creators, kind of like me, all the opportunities, the ease of doing stuff is dramatically improved here. Now, in my opinion, a tablet like this kind of works tag team with your smartphone. So if you got an iPhone, I would probably go with an iPad. If you're using a Android, I'd probably go with an Android just so there's they work seamlessly together. Uh, I have found uh, the reason why I have an iPhone and I did get a new one on there, zero percent interest rate, trade-in, great deal kind of thing. These weren't selling. I got the XR mainly because th this is the first time we've had a 1080p camera on the uh, face side. So I can actually film myself and this is good enough quality for Instagram and YouTube. Uh, pretty much all the tips I've been doing on Instagram have been on my cell phone in conjunction with an inexpensive Rode uh, Dead Cat mic, a directional mic. And to give you the idea of the quality, 
I just put the camera on my tripod and I'm recording off of the mic about 12 feet away. I'm talking into the mic, my Nikon, iPhone. Nikon, iPhone. For what we do online, this is good enough. And yes, that was on the, uh, the forward-facing selfie camera. Or I guess, whichever one where you're looking at yourself there. And why is that important? Because if you're in a Wi-Fi setup, you can stream on this stuff. It's pretty much native in YouTube to use your smartphone for streaming applications. In fact, the stream I did last uh, Tuesday, right before this video comes out, was done entirely on my iPhone in conjunction with my iPad. Because I could actually turn the volume down on the iPad, read chat, interact with stuff, make sure everything was okay, and using my iPhone on a on a tripod extendable arm camera arm, I'm going all over the place with it. I can bring it down really close for demonstrations. I can back it back up. It works really, really well for that kind of st stuff. But I could also put that to my Google Drive, bring it down here, and edit it in iMovie. So there's been several times, like in SWAT, where I actually filmed here, edited there, uploaded it. Really, really simple. There weren't very really many fancy transitions or anything like that, but it worked great. Now, before I had this one, streaming is not that big a deal. I actually was streaming using the forward-facing camera on my very old iPad. I think it's best was 720. And I just did it all right here. Forward-facing camera. I turned the volume down. It still picked up my mic. I could read the chat and answer questions. And I had this on a tripod and did several different streams right off of that on the iPad. So as content creators, it does open up some opportunities. Even more in print. Once again, it's mainly just because of convenience factor that, you know, this thing has a pretty much an all-day battery. I can take it with me to a bookstore, sit down in the corner, and do as much writing as I want. And you have free programs. A simple text editor isn't that big a deal. But for a lot of my blog posts or something like that, I will simply sit there. I, you can pick up these old wireless uh, Bluetooth... Uh, keyboards, this happens to be another Apple one just because they work seamlessly together, and type up all you want. Add in pictures, upload it through WordPress or uh, Squarespace or anything to your blog. It just works great that way. And it's the fact that it's getting rid of the, all of the extras. I don't need to have unlimited fonts. I don't need to have a lot of layout stuff. I just want to get text down. This works perfectly for that. So I want you to think about what I just described for new content creators. Uh, $250 because you'll probably find it on sale somewhere because this very basic educational model is something that Apple's pushing out to a lot of schools and stuff like that. So I don't know if it's they just have more margin in them or what, but you can generally ha find them on sale somewhere, you know, less than $300. An Apple Pencil, I can do illustrations, I can do decent photography. I can do decent video. I can even stream. I can upload to the internet. Uh, FYI, uh, I do not have a uh, data plan for this one. I just use a data plan on my phone so I don't have to pay for it twice. Uh, you can do that. It doesn't take too much. Uh, I've done live streaming out in the field through this using my phone as a, a hotspot letting the iPad or tablet doing all the streaming out there. I mean, it's not going to give you the best quality, but for what we do, it's good enough. And most people won't really care the difference. But the thing that I keep coming back to, the thing why this is all of a sudden gone to something I'm using for some basic media content absorption and maybe a little writing and a, a prompt for my uh, chat during live streams to something I have pretty much on all day long as a resource. Yeah, I do yet listen to podcasts or a Bluetooth speaker in my shop as this is the main hub of that, is the integration with this high-quality pencil because it is totally 
replaced all these little books I have, plus the fact that I have layers, I have a compass, I'm able to draw straight lines, and when all is said and done, I can save it as a file with a unique file name that I will be able to go back to and actually find my ideas again so they're not lost to the ether of lead paper and a box somewhere. That right there has made me excited about designing again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favorite, subscribe, do all those social medias. And once again, uh, I don't want you to say that you have to have the Apple products. Uh, I'm quite sure Android has some kind of options out there, or if they don't, they will in six months or so, that are equal or equivalent. I've always found that every product has something that it does very, very well. The iPhones have always done seemed to do video better than everything everybody else out there, and nobody's really contended that. Photos, yeah, plus or minus what year you're doing. Memory, battery, all that kind of stuff, it's all variable. But I have found that every time I've gone shopping, the iPhone has been far and away the best video recorder of all the smartphones. And for me as a content creator, that's been the most important thing. And after all is said and done, I want you to remember one last thing. That it's always worth the effort to learn even new technology that will integrate into your shop. Create stuff with it and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.